Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So, we're going to start out this semester with a website by the name of Blockly Games. Blockly.games. Here's the web address uh, sitting right up there in your in your video window right now. Blockly.games. So, with that, let's dive into the games. First, we'll do puzzles. Now, this game attaches properties to an object. So this, that's, the, that's what we're learning about here. Uh, object properties. Your object is an animal. But the properties are it's a cat, or it's a duck, or it's a bee, or, or some other animal, a snail, and so forth. And so this is just a little fun exercise to get you guys used to the interface. But it's also got something important about programming, modern programming in these days. And that is the idea of properties. Objects have properties. Let's see, a cat has whiskers. It has four legs. There's a picture of a cat. And it's got fur. Does it have anything else? A stinger, slime, shell, honey, bee feathers? Uh, I would say no. I would say this is a cat. So I want you to finish the rest of this on your own. It gets you used to the interface of dragging stuff around, dropping it where you want it, and things like that. So using, it's, it's a good exercise just to help you figure out how to use this program. And of course, when I do the check answers, it's going to say, no, you're, you've got a lot of things that are wrong. And which block is highlighted? I don't see. Oh, there. This one hasn't been done yet. You guys do the rest. When you're done, take a picture of this. When you're done, get the Java code. You won't get Java code for this first activity. But for the rest of activities, you will. We are learning JavaScript. So a real programming language. So we're going to be getting into that very shortly. Let me talk a little bit more about objects. There we go. Go to Microsoft Word. A good way to think of objects is like Microsoft Word. I am going to create an object. I'm going to insert a shape. So the object is a shape. And the type of shape it is is a terminator. And I just click where I want the Terminator to go. And why didn't it do anything? These are flowchart symbols, which we're going to get into flowcharting later either. So the first thing I do is to select the size. I use my mouse. So size is one of the properties of an object. And there it is. Uh, we can go to the formatting tools. And we have, we can change the fill we can change the outline we can change a lot of other things about this shape shape fill I can make it all yellow for example I'm gonna leave it white we can add text to the object that's another property and the actual content of the text uh, what the text says is another property now we can go to the shapes class that's what they call it, classes. And we can select another shape, say a arrow. We're going to need this for flow charting also. So this is another, so it's in the same class. It's a shape. It's like a subset of shapes. Subset of shapes is arrows. The subset of shapes is a terminator symbol. And they all have different properties. The arrow has a length property, a width property, and so forth. Okay, that's enough on this puzzles. Let's go back. Or was I supposed to go next?
Nope, that was it. That was it on the puzzles. There's no next button. So there's no more puzzles to do. So let's go to the maze. And now the first few activities are to get you guys used to how, how to program this. So the goal is to go from this little guy is going from A to B. You can change the character, by the way. So here's an astronaut. You know, on the space station. Same problem on the space station. Here's a panda bear. Where's the panda bear? Oh, in the forest somewhere. Okay, so let's move this guy forward. Oops, yeah. Run the program. There's move forward. It's already, the block is already in here. You could move two forwards. It might take two. I don't know. Drag and drop your blocks. That's why they call it Blockly. Run the game. Oh, uh, okay. I've only got one move forward. It needs two. Drag and drop. Reset. Try it again. Yay! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Here's your JavaScript. You'll need to uh, copy and paste this into your assignment. Homework assignment. So, some of the more advanced assignments we're going to I'm going to let you guys do it they'll be considered mastery tests you have got to be able to accomplish this in order to move on okay so now we have what do you, we have a sequence this is what's called a Turing machine that we move forward and then we're going to turn left move forward again then we're going to turn right move forward and we ought to be able to get to the end computers do things one step at a time sequentially so run the program yay JavaScript cut and paste this into the assignment ready for the next level now this is what's called a while loop or in JavaScript repeat or actually it, it is a while loop in JavaScript we'll see that in a minute but you repeat doing something until a condition is met you repeat action like moving forward let's do that let's drop it next there we repeat moving forward until the panda bear reaches the end run it now we're going to be getting into MATLAB in the future but this is a good time to talk about The, the flow charting. So not only do I want you to paste the JavaScript like this, but I want you to flow chart your programs. That is good program planning. MATLAB uses while. The conditions in MATLAB are very similar to this condition. MATLAB does not use the curly braces. I'll publish a MATLAB to JavaScript equivalency. And MATLAB is not necessarily a line terminator. If you use a semicolon in MATLAB, it will not print the results of an action. In JavaScript, you need the semicolon at the end of each line. When you're done with a line, you got to put a semicolon. MATLAB, the semicolon works a little differently. So we're going to be getting into MATLAB later in the semester, which is why I want to talk a little bit about it now and just get you guys used to the idea that what you're learning here will apply later. We're not going to dive as deeply into MATLAB as JavaScript.
we're going to teach you the stuff you need to know for EEE 202 and ECE 211. But we're not going to go into everything MATLAB does. Just enough so that you guys can go to your next course. And of course, there is a MATLAB course that you can take, which goes into everything. Okay, ready for the next level. And it's about time for me to say, adios for now. We'll go to the next video in the playlist.